All right. So today's episode is actually going to be with a lady named Nancy Picard. And what we're actually going to be talking about is the link between your personal self-worth or your self-image and your life achievement and attainment. As, as a lot of you who know me know, this is an area I have become increasingly passionate about. When I was younger, I kind of thought it was woo-woo stuff, but as I've gotten older and I've done more reading and research, I've found that uh, things like mindset and self-image are actually crucially important to your overall ability to achieve your goals. So anyway, it's going to be a great episode, worth a listen, and let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Nancy Picard with us today, nancypicardlifecoach.com. And what we're going to be talking about is the connection between your self-worth and your net worth. And I, I'm, I'm just going to give a little bit of a confession. So earlier in my life, I have thoughts of sense of all, but earlier in my life, my life, I would have thought that this idea was a little bit of woo-woo out there, and I probably would have dismissed it out of hand. But you know, as I've gotten older, possibly wiser, and as I've read more, I've actually come to believe that there actually is quite a connection between how you view yourself, your self-worth, and your ability to attain your goals in life. But anyway, before we get into that, Nancy, please introduce yourself and don't let me go on too long. Okay. Hi, I'm Nancy Picard, and I'm a Master Integrative Life Coach and the author of the book, Bigger, Better, Braver, Conquer Your Fears, Embrace Your Courage, and Transform Your Life. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So let's just start off with looking at this connection between, you know, and by net worth, that's a pithy way of essentially saying your life achievement. And so, you know, what have you seen as far as how the two of those things are connected? And what are some of the pitfalls that people frequently can fall into? I think they're connected on both sides. So uh -huh. if you don't feel worthy, then there's a whole you know, bang the things that happen. You don't ask for what you should be getting in terms of salary. You give away your time and work. You yeah. work for free. You work for less money than you should. You don't control your money. You don't watch your money. You don't pay attention to your money. So you wear blinders and you don't even think about half the stuff you should be thinking about in terms of your business, growing your business. Like if you don't feel worthy, yeah. then you're not going to feel worthy to put X amount of dollars into your business that it needs to grow because, yeah. you know, money makes money. And that as much as we in the business world and small businesses wish that wasn't so, yeah. it really is so. But if you don't feel worthy, you aren't going to feel worthy to invest the money that you need to into your business. So you always are going to have a small mindset and you're mm -hmm. not going to get to the place where you want to go. You're going to stay where you are. So mm -hmm. that's one whole piece of this. Another piece of this is that if you're not making a lot of money, or you haven't accrued a lot of money, that can make you feel unworthy. Yeah. So it can go either way. And your worthiness isn't necessarily just around money. Yeah. But if you think you're not worthy, then you're not worthy of money, and you're not worthy of time, and you're not worthy of setting healthy boundaries. And you're not yeah. worthy of having your needs met. You're not worthy of conserving energy. All of those things play yeah. into business. Well, and so, okay, so this is kind of, this is getting into an interesting area here because, you know, the author that I've read the most about this from is uh, Maxwell Maltz in Psycho-Cybernetics, which of course, by contemporary standards is considered ancient work. I, I happen to think it's still really relevant, but the whole idea, the, the place where a lot of people struggle is, okay, well, how do I go from... I don't feel worthy to, I do feel worthy. And then how do I go from, I do feel worthy to I'm achieving exceptional results. Okay. So feeling worthy is an inside job. It's self-referenced. It's not other referenced. It's not about how other people see you. If you don't feel worthy, it doesn't matter how many people tell you how amazing you are. Yeah. You're not going to own it. So that's where we start. It's an inside job. And you need to, like, I'm a shadow coach. You yeah. work with somebody like me that helps you uncover the disempowering beliefs that are stuck in your subconscious from your childhood. My needs don't matter. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. I'll never be chosen. I need to stay quiet to be safe. I need to control everything to be safe. These kinds of beliefs are very disempowering and they affect how we play out in the world. Uh -huh. So 
Step one is trying to decipher which are your shadow beliefs, how they were formed to protect you as a child, but how they're keeping you small and stuck as an adult. And how are they playing? So I can give you an example. Let's say you have the shadow belief that you need to know everything. Go ahead. And, And when you say shadow belief, unpack that for me a little bit. So a shadow belief is a belief that's in your subconscious. That's why it's called shadow. It's like not Uh out in the light. Yeah. And these beliefs are formed in the first 10 years of life. Something happens, an event happens, you're not emotionally mature enough to understand it. And subconsciously in an instant, you give it a meaning. Uh And that meaning is there to keep you safe. So for example, you're eight years old, you stand up in class, you talk, and you say something wrong, and everybody laughs at you, or you answer a question, you get it wrong, everybody laughs at you. Mm -hmm. In that instant, you make it mean that you're stupid, and that you need to stay quiet. So nobody knows. So that belief, you're not even aware of it. It's formed to keep you safe, but it's in your because it's in your subconscious, but it rules your operating system. You make a promise to yourself. You make an underlying commitment to yourself. I will always stay quiet. So no one will know. Fast forward 30 years, you're in business. You never give your opinion. You don't speak up in meetings. You're quiet. Because that yeah. belief is controlling you. You don't even know why. You think you're an introvert. You know, you yeah. don't even know why you're doing that. But by doing that, you get passed over in jobs because people don't think you have, you know, a need. You don't share your needs. Let's say the belief came out, you're the fifth kid in a family uh-huh. and your needs are never being met. So you don't believe you're worthy of having your needs met. Therefore, you never ask for what you need. And if you don't ask for what you need, the only thing I can tell you for sure is you're not going to get it, right? Well, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's very true. Well, and I was also thinking, so how do you think this kind of thing manifests? And because I think, you know, we were just talking about it in sort of like a traditional career setting. How do you feel that this would come across in, say, like a solopreneur, entrepreneur type of setting, somebody who is going out and and putting their own business together, because I would imagine that it will still manifest just a little differently. Well, sure, because that's like, that's who I am, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I'm feeling unworthy, then I will feel, oh, I can't put that money into ads and I can't hire other people and I can't charge X amount of dollars because I don't feel worthy enough. So I have to work with my own worthiness and then stick to that. Yes, I'm worthy of asking this amount of money. You know, so for me as a life coach, when I first started 10 years ago, what I charged then versus what I charge now as a master coach in the business for 10 years, best-selling book, all of that stuff. I I go and I'm a speaker, you know, I'm all that stuff. That all adds to my worthiness and it adds to what I charge. Well, I had to work my way up. I had to prove to myself over and over again that I was worthy of asking for what I believe I'm worth. And so as you were saying that, one of the things that I was just kind of thinking about is how do you think the causal arrow goes between your, so like, for example, you're talking about certifications, about publishing, about speaking, you know, those are all things that will increase your credibility, theoretically, irregardless of your personal worthiness. Now, when you say that the causal arrow goes, that that feeling of internal worthiness is, is what will drive you to accomplish those things, or is there something else at play? Well, I'm not sure I'm answering your question, but I have a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm always into learning and growing. I'm not learning and growing. I don't have like a motivation to prove my worthiness by how many certifications I have, but I love having more tools in my toolbox and the more tools in my toolbox and the more times I utilize those tools that increases my worthiness. And then I've increased my own internal worthiness. And then I also, fear is a big part of this, right? So we have to accept that we're never going to get to a fearless state and we're going to move forward even with fear. Yeah. And so asking for what you believe you deserve, that's a leap of faith. Uh And it's short-term discomfort for long-term comfort. 
Because the reverse is true. If you never ask for what you need, yeah. you don't have that short-term discomfort. You have long-term forever discomfort. Yeah. You're not making enough money. Your, your needs yeah. aren't being met. Your business isn't growing. All of yeah. those things. Let me ask the question a little bit of a different way. Okay. <laughs> so let's say we'll call them. I'm trying to think of a name that rhymes with Nancy, but I'm, but I'm drawing a blank. We'll call Other it than Nancy. Fancy. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll say Fancy. That's it. That's okay. my favorite Reba McIntyre song. So we'll go with it. Okay. So let's say we have another person named Fancy who is a life coach who, uh, who has a you know, just a terminal poor self-worth complex, but has forced herself to go out and do speaking gigs and write the book and get the certifications. Looks exactly the same on paper. How do Fancy and Nancy manifest differently? So Fancy's doing the same things Nancy's doing, but intrinsically, she doesn't feel good about herself? Correct. Okay. Well, I would say that she won't ask for what she needs I would assume that Nancy's making more money than Fancy is. Almost certainly. Because she, yeah, because she feels good about herself. She knows she's worthy. She doesn't give her sources away anymore. Yeah. She doesn't, you know, she's willing to spend money on herself yeah. and her business because she knows she's worth it. Yeah. Fancy doesn't feel we gave the wrong person because Fancy <laughs> probably is the one that's yeah. got all the, all the self-worth. But so Fancy, I'm, I, I was going to make a bad joke, but I won't yeah. go ahead. <laughs> Fancy and Nancy have the same qualifications and Nancy is soaring and spending money and making money and putting money into her business and into herself because she knows she's worthy of it. Fancy has gotten all the degrees, yeah. but she's not doing those things because she doesn't have the inner self-worth. Gotcha. Okay. Well, and so I think what this all comes back to is coming back to building that self-image that will really be the springboard for your, you know, kind of for your lifetime of achievement. Because you know, it's like you said, it isn't just asking what you're worth. It's being willing to invest in yourself. It's being willing to go out and put the ads out. You know, it's being confident that you can put that you can't expend money without knowing that it is going to come back right away, knowing that it will come back multiplied in the future. Agreed. And also, you have to be willing to fail. You really have to be willing to fail. If I put together a challenge and then I think I'm going to, you know, and I put Facebook ads out yeah. there and I do a seven day challenge and I think it's going to bring me all kinds of new clients and blah, 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 blah. And it doesn't. Yes, I'm human. I'm going to feel like crap for yeah. a little right. while and that I spent money I shouldn't have spent until I start to do the research and think, oh, wait a minute, percentage wise, I actually did get a good turnout, but uh -huh. I didn't spend enough money. Uh -huh. I actually needed to spend four times the amount of money to get what I thought I wanted to get. And gotcha. that was a stepping stone for me. I only failed in the moment. Uh -huh. But now I get to look at it and ask myself what worked, what didn't work? How do I make this a yes? What do I do yeah. next? How do I redo it? What do I keep and what do I get rid of? So next time around, I will be more successful. Yeah, gotcha. I think that's actually a really important thing to, to bear in mind also is, you know, as you're going through, whether it's a life journey career, or especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're building a business, I call it the journey of a thousand failures, which is that, you know, you will need to go through a whole lot of things that don't work the way you intended before you get to the thing that does. And then once you get there, you will probably still go through many more failures, although hopefully with a bank or a backstop you this time in order to get it to where it's what you really want it to look like. But I think in order to go through that, you know, wh what I really hear you're saying, and it resonates with me because I agree with it, is that you need to have that self-worth in place in order to be able to endure that journey of a thousand failures without you know, really becoming despondent and just kind of getting down on yourself. Yeah, I agree. I, I would think that people think that successful people have no fears and that they need when they are feel that way, then they too will be successful. Yeah. When I'm no longer afraid, I will be successful. Yeah. Successful people have the same fears. They just go anyway. They yeah. hear them, they feel them, but they use it as a driving force. They use it as motivation. When I am afraid to do something, it's a signal that growth is right there. Yeah. I just have to step in. Got it. And 
So that's the big difference is that successful people just keep stepping in. And if they fall, they fall forward, they pick themselves up, they dust themselves off, they look at what worked, what what didn't work, and they go again and again and again. If you have really low self-worth, if you did not get, if you didn't do the work to become confident, because competence creates confidence. Confidence creates confidence. You have to keep doing something, chunk it down, tiny little steps over and over again, proving to yourself that you can become competent and therefore become confident. Got it. Well, that is, I was going to say, I don't know that I can top though, (laughs) but I think that's a, that's a good conclusion to the episode. Nancy, can you let everybody know where they can find out some more about you and uh, connect with you either on social or go to your website? Okay. So it's all pretty much the same. (laughs) NancyPicardLifeCoach.com is my website. And on my website are all my different offerings and courses and a link for a free discovery call. And you can also buy my book right off there or Nancy. Nancy Picard Life Coach is my Instagram and my Facebook. And you know what? I see Nancy run actually might be my LinkedIn. I'm not really sure about that one, but I'm on, I'm everywhere. All right. Really like clubhouse everywhere. Excellent. Well, that's awesome. Everybody go to nancypicardlifecoach.com. And uh, Nancy, really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz, where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.